One thing in hindsight that I wish I had done was starting to use the hangboard as a supplement earlier on, but with a very, very long view of my finger strength. So pertinent, such a great question. Yeah, so I'm like, is it appropriate for a new climber to do that? What yes, are your thoughts? yes, we're in an age now where we can say this. Coaches like me used to get shot down in flames for saying like the beginners should use hangboards. It was always just like, you will definitely get injured. Like says who, like from what stats are we going from there? And like what we have to bring in into play is, is pilot error. It's not so much the, the, the stage that the climber was at, it's, it's what they did on that hangboard, you know? And so what we, I mean, for example, all these early injury stats on hangboards came out before people even knew about like standing in a pulley rig or standing in a stretch band or like reducing the load on this hangboard. Like, of course, if a beginner goes up to a hangboard and tries to hang the 15 mil edges footless, they're putting some like really bad strain on their fingers. It's like a crazy thing to do. But like if you hang on like 30 mil holds with your foot in a pulley rig and you take 10 kilos off, why is that any different to climbing? answer it's not and in fact it's much less likely to injure you than climbing because sometimes when we climb we we snatch for holds we don't catch them correctly we put a torsional load through our fingers and load them awkwardly etc etc so you just can't construct an argument that hangboarding isn't safe for beginners it's all about how you use it and what you do but where it fits in and what i'm picking up on here is i'm wondering steve if you had the same thing in your climbing that i did which is as a result of not using hangboards in the early stages you developed a chronic weakness at a certain angle range i mean i've got a guilty secret i, I got to <laughs> 80 plus just by full crimping i'm talking like boning with the thumb locked over <laughs> and i could and i could drag i could hang like this but if you ask me to half crimp with my fingers at 90 degrees, I couldn't do it with two hands on a 25 mil rung. Wow. I just, I just couldn't support myself and I could climb yeah. it and I was able to climb 80 plus. It was a chronic <laughs> weakness, but I'm the classic child of the eighties. We didn't yeah. know what a half crimp was. It was either a full crimp or it was a drag. And so working in later years with the, the like, well, the last sort of 15 years with some of the guys from Beastmaker, you know, and they originally like, did some i did some really cool like dan varian did like a sort of diagnostic on me and he was like gresham you can't hide this half crimp weakness anymore you've got to do something about it and you know working on my half crimp over the last 15 years was another example of a, like something that i did which made a massive of, of course it made a massive difference to my climbing i mean crumbs, you don't need to be a, a sports scientist to work out why that might be but you know um it was, uh, and I've virtually closed the gap now. I'm now virtually as strong half crimped as I am full crimped. And it took me mm. nearly 15 years to do that. But like, <laughs> remember, you know, I came from this era where none of this stuff was known. You just grip the hold the way you grip the hold and you use the holds that you like using and you basically shy away from the holds that you don't like using. And that was how you totally. climb. But of course, you use a hangboard and you, you regularly you know, in a, a structured, strategic and controlled way, you train your fingers through a range of angles, you're not going to get a weakness within your gripping range and you're going to be a more versatile climber. So it makes total sense. And I'm curious if you have any recommendations for me, actually, because with the half crimp in particular, like something that's very odd to me still, like when I train my other grips, they seem to just kind of progress slowly over time. Whereas the half crimp, for whatever reason, just always has seemed like it's all over the place and it, it'll kind of improve for a bit. Oh, I Why know. is that? Why is that? Oh, look, this is just, this is <laughs> training. And, but also this is just, the more you study it, the less you know. Like it, sometimes I think there's just no rhyme, no reason to any of it. Yeah. It does, it does, it does improve over, look, it took me 15 years, you know, and I reckon <laughs> for one of those years, it probably for like an entire year, it was probably worse. I know it dips and I know it goes up and down, but I reckon sometimes it could even dip for an entire year. But if you steady away, I mean, you said right at the start, like a lot, you, you nailed it when you said a long term commitment to this thing. That's the key to it, because people are seeing these fluctuations and they're going, this is wacko. I'm going on Instagram and I'm seeing all these people who are smashing their benchmark scores. Like, mm. why am I going down? I'm doing something wrong. Oh, this sucks. I'm not interested in it. Like, I promise you, these people on Instagram, like, they're not doing anything different to you, but maybe they're just stick with it, sticking with it. And maybe they're just like making a post on the day when it goes well, because it will go badly for them too. In fact, it's not a case of badly or well. It's just a case of 
stick the training in the bank, stick the training in the bank, stick mm. the training in the bank, and just stick it in the bank, and you just keep going. <laughs> and 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 like, I mean, we could go on a proper geek fest about whether the half crimp is more. You, you it, I'm, I'm sound, it's sounding to me like you feel that there's more variability in the half crimp than in other grips and the other grips are more consistent. Is that what you're Correct. saying? Exactly. I yeah. mean, that, that could just be a you thing and that could just be because it's your weakness. I mean, mm. but I do think inherently the half crimp is, it, 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 it's a weird thing to say because it depends out whether you're good at it or not, but it, it takes so much strength to keep it in that position because your fingers are fundamentally trying to be ripped open into a drag. Yeah. You know, where drag is a more passive grip, you know, the tendons are being loaded passively and you're relying to an extent on the friction of the first pad being hooked over the edge. Same with the full crimp, you know, you're kind of like using leverage, you're like hyper extending that first joint, whereas the, the half crimp is just, there's so much leverage on that, you know, mm. and I think that's probably why so many people shy away from it in the first place. You know, I coach right. a lot of beginners who can drag and crimp, but they go, I just haven't got anything there when they try to half crimp. So they just don't do it. And and you can just, even with modern holds at modern gyms, you can still see climbers falling into this trap, but you've got to be so careful with the message, you know, because again, they're, they're going on social media and they're seeing all this hangboarding stuff. And you've got to be so clear what they do. You know, what are we doing here? It's more about learning initially, like gripping technique, you know, the, the finger positioning on these edges that just explaining to someone that there are three ways of, well, if you want to look at micro percentages, there's like five ways, but essentially there's like three main ways you can grip an edge, each which has a sub stage. I mean, we could get into bird beaking and all that kind of stuff and open crimps and chiseling and la 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 la, you know, but but just like teaching someone like the, the biomechanics of gripping is important and just with lots of weight on their feet after warming up, just trying to hold these different finger positions. I, I, I cannot see an argument against that. Yeah. We're not saying to this climber, you don't need to bother like climbing or like buying yourself a pair of climbing shoes. You're just going to like hit this hangboard super hard. <laughs> We're not saying that to this person, obviously. Right, right. Yeah, that's worth reiterating probably is that, you know, this isn't to be, this isn't training time to be taken away from your climbing. This is like something very easy you can do in addition to your climbing uh, to hopefully move the needle over years and years with your finger strength. Um, but yeah, I, I <laughs> the half crimp thing, that's really interesting what you just described because that's kind of my theory is that there's a lot more muscular engagement in the forearm with that grip than your other grips. And I, I think because I'm now combining my finger strength training with other climbing that I'm doing, I think it's just, it just must be like a muscular fatigue thing that has more variation day to day than my ability to just hang on my tendons that have been developed over years and years, you know? And now here we've got some real dilemma type stuff coming up. You know, the way you want to make some real killer gains in your hangboard, you know, I'll, I'll tell you a secret, you know, well, this is no secret. Stop climbing. <laughs> <laughs>